Welcome to Digital Marketing Solutions, the only podcast hosted by a marketing and startup consultant with over 20 years experience working for ad agencies across the world. Start getting the results you want with online marketing today. And now, here's your host, David Summerfleck. Hello, and thank you for joining me with another episode of the Digital Marketing Solutions Podcast. My guest today is Ralph Gagliardi. Did I say that correctly? Yes, Gagliardi. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to speak with me, Ralph. I hope you're doing well. Let's talk about your business exactly. Um, I really want to dig down a little bit deep into this because I think it's very interesting and something a lot of businesses uh, really need to be more informed on. And by comparison, I think a lot of digital marketers in my background need to know more about what you do. So can we let's start with your own personal background and experience, how you got started in this line of work and then um, what exactly you do with this company? Uh, well, thank you. Uh, my name is Ralph Gallardi. Uh, I've been a law enforcement investigator for over 30 years, and uh, my pension and passion has always been in the fraud or financial crime market. Uh, I really like that space. Uh, while building upon that, uh, we found a, a, a niche or an area that needed some attention. Uh, bad guys were getting at uh, persons' businesses, their business name, uh, by stealing it, hijacking it. We call this business identity theft. Well, once the bad guys uh, take on or steal or hijack your business name, it's off to the races. Uh, they can get access to credit, uh, purchase goods, property, and other things, all in your business's good name, and you don't even know what happened. Now, when you say business name, can you qualify that? Just so viewers and listeners understand a little bit more what you mean by that. Is that, for example, someone takes the name of your company and just posts lots of uh, negative reviews or much deeper than that? Sure, yes. It's a, it's, it's a very little known crime, uh, if you ask me, uh, and I'll ask a lot of others uh, who've been victims of this. So if you're, uh, if you're an owner of a business, uh, more than likely, I don't know a case why you would not, you're going to have that business registered or listed with a secretary of state's office. Right, so, yes. LLC or, or, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's fine, yeah. So with the secretary of state's office and that registration, uh, that means a lot. It means that you're registered, you're incorporated, you're an LLC, you know, other things. It says your address, who your registered agent is. Uh, and with that name that's at the secretary of state's office, most of uh, whom the secretary of state's offices those businesses aren't secured there unless uh, you've done other things to protect it there. And even then, uh, it's, it's a gamble. So with that name uh, in the database of a given Secretary of State's office, bad guys log into that site, and by committing a crime uh, under the penalty of perjury, they take over your name by changing your business address, your registered agent's name, then taking that business and applying for credit or using its name uh, for other things such as property, stealing it, putting it in, the, in front of or position of uh, a name of a, you know, just a, a layer, if you will, uh, to hide themselves and then steal things. Yeah, because I remember when I lived in Colorado, and I don't know if this is in every state in the union or not. You may know more about it than me. But I remember when we lived in Denver, I had a nonprofit organization that I started briefly. It was a horrible experience, didn't go well. And then I had a digital marketing agency. And I remember registering the digital marketing agency as an LLC. And I remember logging in and doing the paperwork and everything online and noticing, holy cow, if I want to go to someone else's business, it's very, very easy to just go in and change their records in that Secretary of State uh, website. Now, obviously, I did not do that. I wouldn't do that. But I noticed that it was so easy to do. I don't remember exactly how I found out, but I, I was really, really surprised. And I remember going and getting my wife and saying, am I missing something here? I want a second opinion. 
you know, maybe I'm, I'm just not seeing this. Is this really what I see? Is it really that easy? And is it like that in every state? Yes, it really is that easy. And I would say most states, maybe not, there's a few exceptions that make you jump through a few other hoops. Uh, but most states, it is that easy. And it's like locks uh, on, a, on a, a locker or other thing. It's just meant to keep honest people honest. Uh, with the Secretary of State's office, they're there for the flow of business, to be ac accessible and user-friendly. And they accomplish that. But guess what? The bad guys prey on that uh, vulnerability. And with a, a little layer such as an attestation under penalty of perjury or some such, right? Uh, you know, most people like yourself in that example, you just, uh, oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, guess what? A lot of, there's a lot of wolves <laughs> out there preying on sheep. And they're yeah. Do that. So how do you protect yourself, right? Company alarm. That's how you do it. Why? I mean, it begs the question, why do they permit that? They must know. Well, I, I think that their business model, I cannot speak for Secretary of State's offices and how they keep their databases. Like, again, they're there for a different reason, a different flow, uh, and they are not looking at all things. And if their perspective is different, and I think they're leaving it uh, on to you uh, and or the business owner to keep yourself safe, much like your date of birth and social security number, you've got it in your own health, right? Yeah. It's on you to keep your own self healthy. Is that, is that a saying? Right. So you want to keep your business healthy as well. And part of it is right here, uh, watching what your business is doing and how it's reported and who's making changes. So how did Company Alarm get started and then how did you come into the picture? Well, our fa uh, founder, Andy Pham, uh, he was a victim of a business identity theft uh, on, a, on a land uh, situation where property was stolen from him uh, by use uh, by uh, the bad guys in this case, uh, put down, uh, changed, made changes to uh, his record, his business record, filed at the Secretary of State's office, and in essence, stole his property right out from underneath him. By the time he found out about it, it was too late. So in that sense, uh, Andy struggled with, he's still struggling to this day with what this happened years ago, several years ago. And with that, uh, he uh, garnered some, uh, some press on that. And in that sense of the press that was uh, covering uh, this story, uh, they learned of our team uh, in Colorado uh, working these types of cases and called up and asked us for some uh, well, I don't know if it's advice, but called us and asked us for some expertise. So because of that expertise that we're able to give in this niche, uh, the company alarm asked me to come along as an advisor, mm -hmm. uh, giving out information of how this happens, how to prevent it, uh, and how do we make it better? How could we help the companies? So my role is uh, to point out red flags and to give awareness training and just beat the drum that, hey, your business is vulnerable. In a, in a few ways, not that it's if it's just uh, active and uh, out there, if your business is delinquent, if your business is inactive, bad guys can still log on to most Secretary of State's offices, make a change. Of course, they have to pay a fee to revive it. But, but what's minor. 20, 40, 60 bucks? Yeah, exactly. They revive yeah. it and apply for hundreds of thousands of dollars of credit or commit lots of uh, theft with your business's name. Now, at face value, I can hear a lot of small business owners saying, this has nothing to do with me. I'm small time, I'm small fry. It's, it's got nothing to do with me. Can you articulate from your perspective, you know, why it would be relevant to the small to medium enterprise business on up? Not just the, when I think of enterprise, I usually think 5 million and above. It's relevant. Can you explain basically how it's relevant before you get to that level and, and above, Absolutely. of course? I'm biting at the bit here to answer that. <laughs> okay. So I, I don't know the math, but there is more small businesses than large businesses, right? We know that. Absolutely. And it, not if it's a big business, it's just a business's name. And frankly, the most business ID theft that we see and the most uh, the businesses that are out there, frankly, are small, but not because of that. Our fraudsters are out there uh, getting at your business 
because it's a small business. There's a lot of business credit equity to be had by just your mom and pop, two employees, 10 employees. They call up with that business as long as it has some age, two, three, four, five years, right? Age at the Secretary of State's office. Well, they can apply for credit. Let's just give one example. Cell phone companies. You call up with blankety blank business inc hey uh phone company i have uh, uh uh three employees starting how many phones can i get from you here's my business based on your business's name and their credit check of how they check you're good for 15 brand new state-of-the-art phones well what's 15 phones they're at least a thousand a piece there's fifteen thousand right there uh that they ship to an address of your choice bad guy's choice because they hijacked your business. Other examples, in a secondary type lending market of loans, they take uh, mom and pop business A, B, C, D, E. They look separate, but they go into the same loan company. That's my special effect there for sending it into the company. And with that, uh, they apply for, let's just say in this case, 10 different businesses for 50, 55,000 a piece. The lending agency doesn't see that they're different businesses, they lend, Fifty, sixty thousand dollars on each. Bad guys are off to the races in your business's name with that kind of cash. Now, with your own background, first of all, I want to find, I want to ask you: Do you see these vulnerabilities in other areas other than just the Secretary of State websites? Well, in speaking of business uh, identity theft, it definitely is. Uh, mostly if not all related to your business's name and how it's registered and where it's registered. It doesn't always have to happen that way, but how it's secured or where it's registered, that's what the bad guys want. They wanna control that because that's who the issuers of credit go to when they're checking your business. What is your address? So if they a, look, look at those records. So if a business is hacked, for example, they could be hacked across a very broad spectrum, not just a Secretary of State site. They could be hacked through email. They could be hacked through, uh, you know, an, an unsecure uh, website, which is even in 2020 is still very, very common. I see it daily. So do you ever work in conjunction with a cybersecurity firm? Um, I can think of several, you know, that work with web developers like WordFence and Security and so on. Do you ever work with organizations like that for larger yes. issues? I do in, in my investigative law enforcement function. And with Company Alarm, we're looking at different ways to keep your business safe. So in that example uh, that you gave, for instance, uh, really the, the most prevalent thing out there right now is business email compromise. Yeah. The fake, the fish, the, hi, I'm the CEO. Can you please send me this money? I'm out of the office this week, Janice. Uh, and that money goes, or it's a land title deal um, where uh, there's proceeds from a, a land or, or home sale going to a bank account that was changed by the fraudsters and they get that money diverted. So that's an awareness piece uh, that we're working on. And now with Company Alarm, we are just training to that right now, uh, but we're looking at ways to see how that training in that area can, can help your business and keep it safe. So there's all kinds of ways you sh you sh open a window, shut a window, or is it that way, that way, right? You, you open or close a window, bad guys come in a different way. So where you try to shut them down, they're always looking for other ways to gain the system. There's so many different um, avenues. I mean, from computer security, website security for your company, email security, who you interact with, social media, you have to be very careful who you interact with. Um, now, let me ask you, this is a rhetorical question. I already know the answer, but I wish I didn't. How does law enforcement perceive this for the most part and how active are they in, in getting involved? Great question. <laughs> we talk, we, we, you know, I hate when people say that, right? But maybe you don't. Uh, great question. I'd like to back up to, you mentioned Secretary of State's offices. How are they dealing with it? Well, their heads are kind of, I don't want to say it's in the sand. They're aware of it, but they're just kind of, like I said, they have their own uh, push of what they're trying to do with their business model. Law enforcement, uh, for the most part, they may, they may or may not even recognize this occurred. And it makes it tough for law enforcement because the jurisdictional issues that come up. You have it, it's virtual, it's digital, it's cyber-based. 
Uh, we always, I have a good buddy in the business here, and we always ask the question, well, what is cyber? Huh? Well, the answer is yes. The answer is yes, because everything's cyber nowadays. What, what, I'm rocking two phones right here, right? You got your computer going. I got mine. I got another computer sitting over here. Uh, we have to do banking. Uh, we have all this computer-based situations. Well, anyway, the bad guys are using that as well. Get at these hijacks. They do it remotely. They do it electronically. And it's a jurisdictional issue. The money then goes to another point, a money mule, right? So if they, in these instances where I explained business identity theft and how they got uh, iPhones or any kind of phone, doesn't have to be an iPhone, any sort of digital electronics or other cash sent to them, it, it can go through a money mule, un, sometimes unrelated to the, the situation, just used for this purpose to move and layer the bad guys. Well, all of that goes through different jurisdictions. How do you track it down? If you do track it down, which entity is responsible? Which law enforcement? And it's hard. Nothing's, nothing's easy. So when you're working these hard cases that are digital, you've got a lot of jurisdictional issues and they're complex in how you cause attribution. How do you show who was behind the keyboard that made those changes and applied for those loans? Is law enforcement in the U.S. more um, informed and more responsive to these types of issues than they were perhaps five years ago? Absolutely. But, yes. But it, like anything, right, any genre or any new, any, any niche, uh, how many more little words can I throw in there, right? But any, it, it takes a while to get up to speed. And once you, you have to know who to call, just like anything else. Uh, you know, you have your good beggars at the grocery store. You have folks who do a better job on your lung, whatever example, okay? So I, I think that it's like this too, where law enforcement, they want to do a good job, but their focuses uh, and sometimes are taking them to uh, urgent matters, people who are getting harmed physically, right? So a lot of attention is going to that. Uh, but then when you have a complex situation come in, you have to need, you, you have to know who to call. So we would recommend, you know, that you, you call around in your in your jurisdiction or your state. There's state law enforcement, there's county, there's city, and then there's different varying levels of state law enforcement. There's attorney generals, uh, there's state police, there's state bureaus of investigation. In each case, and then of course the federal agencies out there, in each case, one or more of those may need to be brought to bear to help your situation. So let's just briefly break down the difference between identity theft and then reputation management. Can you briefly summarize those differences and where they have different impacts? Sure. I was going to do a horseshoe. Mr. Cotta, Mr. Cotta. So I, I think that the difference on that would be, um, so identity management uh, and your reputation. Well, let's, let's talk that about terms uh, of, Let's talk about in terms of your business. Your business is your name and it's your reputation. If that starts getting sullied, uh, I'm, that's my word of the day. If it gets sullied, uh, then how do you how do you make that good? How do you make that right? It's a lot of you you put a lot of sweat equity into your business and its name, and to have it sullied uh, by these fraudsters and used to get credit and other things, commit crimes in your name. It's your name, your business name. And so you have your reputation and identity and your theft there. And how do you rebuild and get those back on track? Well, I always say, don't let it happen in the first place. Stop it down here. If you stop it down here, you don't got to worry about jurisdiction. You don't got to worry about all these different things, names I threw up. So that's why prevention and education is your friend, especially in identity theft and with your reputation. How long do you think the typical recovery takes uh, from something happening. It seems to me that it could take years. It can. It's like anything else uh, from a minor accident, no damage to a total, right? Collision, just an analogy. But what happened? What? How uh, pervasive were those fraudsters able to get with your business's name? Did they get everything but the kitchen sink? Did they just kind of get into the, the small end? It could take anywhere from a few months to probably three years to climb out of this if they were prolific enough, even longer than three years, frankly, depending on how far their tentacles reached with your business's credit. So it's it's harder to unwind than it is to prevent in the first place. Yeah, because I could imagine getting involved with law enforcement locally, then 
maybe get involved uh, nationally. You're probably going to need some kind of legal representation to clarify matters in the courts and and on and on and on. So how deep does it does your company alarms involvement really go in terms of covering a business? So with company alarm, that's what it gets right at the heart of what I just finished with. Company alarm as a member with the product that we offer. Your business will be notified immediately when any change is made right at the beginning. You can get back in. If you didn't make that change to your business record, you change it back and make sure you lock it down with whatever passwords or other protections are there. And be wary of what just occurred, any strange mail, strange phone calls. That way, when uh, if, mm -hmm. if a creditor or somebody else is going back into that record to check it out, it's back in your name, it's back in your address, it never happened. And then how do you prove a negative, right? Well, that's that value is so astonishing, um, or, or I can't even quantify that value. The headache, the sweat equity you've got to put in and then fix it two, three years. Uh, Andy, our business, our company founder of Company Alarm, he didn't know till it was too late. Uh, and he would, he'd gladly pay thousands to have this not happen. I w uh, Andy has a compelling story about his uh, his hard work that got him where he is today uh, and such a successful uh, person and such a uh, mover of of spirit and mind and uh, how he brings not only his companies forward but the people with those companies well trying to recapture what was stolen from him is immeasurable to Andy not not in money it, it is but in his uh, his ability to uh, do it, work on that personally, the time it takes, the hassle, and just the misery to recapture what is yours once it's gone. So how can business owners spot potential vulnerabilities before they occur? Well, or before they become a problem, I should say. Well, especially with your business's name. It's out there. It's sitting on a Secretary of State's website somewhere. You need to make sure uh, it's not taken. So how do you do that? Do you want to check it every morning when you get up? Do you want to uh, wait for some like alert that may or may not come from the Secretary of State's office? Some have them. But what, that, what if that alert goes to your email mm -hmm. and it goes to your junk? Huh, that's a problem. Well, with Company Alarm, we're, we're letting you know via text message. We're also following up with an email. We'll, we'll stay on it till you're notified. Is this you who made the change? Uh, and I don't, I segue from your question, I think, uh, but what was it? <laughs> uh, my question was basically how can companies spot potential vulnerabilities in identity theft before they become a problem? Well, right here, your company is valuable. Wolves, the suspects, bad guys, whatever, the fraudsters, the shysters, they're coming for it. So there's your problem. Your business is wanted. They want you for your business's name. Now you know. How are you going to watch it? You've got to watch any change that comes in the mail, any any weird credit offers that you didn't solicit. And I don't mean the, the junk mailers necessarily, but like bank accounts that, hey, I didn't set up a bank account. What's going on? Why am I getting, I have a new account set up, right? Your uh, FEIN, your uh, your business identification number, keep that secure. You'd be surprised at how easy those uh, those numbers can be compromised and or created anew. So you, you've got to watch your mail, your phone calls, and do everything you can within reason to keep your business secure. So I want to ask you if from the other side of the spectrum, if you're a digital marketing consultant like me or for that matter anybody who works in a similar or related field with uh, business owners maybe a business consultant or startup consultant how can they be um what's the word i'm looking for a partner in helping businesses how can we as business consultants be more informed in this topic and kind of work with companies like yours yeah, excellent. Like what products like that are available out there um, that can go to add 
added value. Um, but if I'm looking at uh, what that I'm looking at a specific business that might need some help or counseling, uh, I guess counseling is not in the in the vernacular there. But what what kind of services can we help them with? Where are their vulnerabilities? Uh, you know, if you you liken it to a, a business check physically, let's see. There's ground floor window here, a ground floor window here. That's a vulnerability for a break in, right? Well, uh, just like that digitally. Let's see. What is there? Are they encrypting? Where do they store their data? Do they have backups? Are there air gapped backups? Um, what type of clientele? Where's their wall? Uh, how how are how is their business model flowing? Uh, is it sales driven? What is it, right? And sales drives a lot, uh, much much more than uh, uh, so business security. But you have to have a balance because if you don't, your sales are going to be paying for all your breaches. So they're going to pay for your losses. Uh, and your hijacks, your hacks, uh, your ransomwares coming into your system because you didn't have it uh, properly backed up. Now all your uh, data, all your proprietary information or your PII, your personal identifying information that you have in your customers and your partners, it's gone. It's hijacked. It's a hostage. So as a, as a digital marketing person, I, I guess that's a, more of a security aspect. And that's my, my lane. Um, I would look at, at that and try to advise or help or work with what you have. Okay. Should all businesses have title insurance? I guess what I should say is, first of all, do they know what title insurance is? Do most businesses have it? And then should they have it? Right. I think, let, let me let me speak not then specific about title insurance maybe, but let's talk about insurance. Uh, the business insurance at, at, at large, whether it's cyber insurance, title insurance, I think you should have it, but I, I'm not in the insurance game. I think whatever insurance you have, make sure you read the small print because it, with insurance comes, uh, you know, those, the small print, right? Did you, did you follow the policies, the protocols that you said you would in order to abide by this policy or this flow that's in that insurance uh, model? So with that, then you absolutely should have insurance. You need to train to it, follow it, and make sure you've covered your parameters and you know your small print. Is a flood a flood, right? When you, you have that home home insurance, you know, their floods aren't necessarily covered by all home insurance. So that's another analogy. But yes, you should have insurance depending on what type of insurance and what level. You can be overinsured, right? That's not good either. So you need an advisor to help you with that right, again, balance of proper insurance. Now... I only really have one or two more questions for you, but one I wanted to ask you is, does Company Alarm offer any type of a business audit? Or, and, and I guess a second question to that part would be, you know, do you guys have like introductory packages or something, you know, different offerings or different levels of offerings for enterprise and smaller businesses, for example? Yes, right now they are. Uh, I am not working on that side of the marketing, if you will. Uh, but they, they do the company. We do offer uh, different levels or tiers, and those are purely my words that get out to different uh, the, the different uh, potential customers. Uh, is it is it a registered agent uh, office that has many businesses that they can help protect? Are they tiered right there, or is it just single users? So there's a product or a, a an offer for to make it balanced for those as well. So Company Alarm is there to help the smaller single one-offs to a large uh, company, if you will, that has many businesses registered through them, and uh, that way it helps. It helps uh, best of both worlds. We cover more folks with a tiered approach than just one, but we do both. We do both of those things, and you know, as far as advising, you know, we want to we want to give some self-help. Uh, with videos and instructions and or blogs that we share on our website, uh, Company Alarm. And it's it's hopefully helps and gives them added value, even if it isn't re directly related to business identity theft, it could help with business email compromise or other types of frauds that affect your business. Absolutely, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, Ralph, I appreciate your time. Is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, any questions you feel, you know, maybe I should have asked you? Well, no, I think you covered it. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, and as an advisor with Company Alarm, 
I can't recommend the product more. Uh, why? Uh, obviously, oh, he's biased. Well, no, it, it's if you if you want to keep your business uh, secure and and do all these other things, this this is a just a small drop in the bucket to give you peace of mind about your business's name. Uh, I would recommend it wholeheartedly. And with Company Alarm, we're here to help you. And we want to prevent this from getting worse and stop it in its tracks. So I, I appreciate the time today. Absolutely. How can people reach out to you and learn more? Well, we're at companyalarm.com and that will uh, get you uh, our products, our uh, information, and really what we stand for. Okay. Well, Ralph, I appreciate your time. Please stick around with me for another minute or two. For anyone listening or watching, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, every little bit helps. Please consider subscribing. And thank you out there uh, for listening or watching. And stay safe. And we'll tie it up for now. You've been listening to the Digital Marketing Solutions Podcast. To get future episodes as soon as they drop, apply to be a guest, submit questions, or to get direct help with your digital marketing, visit www.dms.blue today. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to give Digital Marketing Solutions a positive review or hit the subscribe button to be notified as soon as our next episode goes live. Thanks, and talk with you next episode.